Motley Crue representing the crew people. Welcome back to Vancouver. Yeah, it's great. I love this place. <laughs> home again. Back home. <laughs> you spent six months here. Yeah. As you, as uh, somebody has said in the band, there wasn't much to do, but there were a lot of strip clubs. Oh, we had a lot of fun here. Yeah. You know. <laughs> I mean, you can only ha you can have a lot of fun in Vancouver. That's one good thing about this city. You know, if you look for it, it's it's there. Sure. But one of the reasons why you came here, other than Little Mountain Sound and Bob Rock, was also the fact that uh, that it caused you to focus on the music as well. Too. Exactly. Yeah. Because yeah. we didn't know anybody here, you know, except for Bob. Yeah. Uh, but while we were here, we made a lot of friends, and uh, it's just just like playing L.A. again. What did Bob Rock bring to the project, uh, other than a great ear? Uh, he really brought a lot of. Uh, a lot of stuff in us that uh, I think we'd kind of forgotten that we had in us, like a lot, like uh, with Mick, a lot of his uh, his guitar playing, you know, with Rock, with Rock being a, a guitar player himself, they just sat in the studio and just and just jammed, you know, for hours and hours, you know, back and forth and uh, and threw stuff on tape and um, he has that, you know, that that 70s influence, you know, which you can kind of hear on our album, which you kind of drug out of us. You know, kind of the stuff that uh, that we grew, the music that we grew up with, but I think we kind of forgot about. And uh, he kind of pulled it out of us. Some of the music was very forgettable back when you got. I mean, you're celebrating. You're about to celebrate your 10th anniversary. Yeah, yeah. How will you celebrate it? By putting out another album. <laughs> <laughs> We're putting out the uh, an album called Decade of Decadence, and uh, it'll be like a best of Motley album plus. Live? Uh, no, not live, right. uh, but uh, like remixed. And uh, we're going to write uh, two new songs for it, but we're going to throw one. Uh, Teaser's going to be on there, and also uh, uh, the song Rock and Roll Junkie, yep. which is on the Ford Fairlane soundtrack. Yep. So those will be like bonus tracks. When you first started nine years ago, uh, rock and roll was not what it was about to become. It was just this wasteland. It was really innocuous music being made. It wasn't the style then, you know? No. What, you know, it was. Uh, you guys were not the style. Man. No, no, absolutely not. We were the. We were totally against the grain. You know, we were. Uh, we were playing in the days of skinny ties and baggy pants. Yeah. You know, and short hair short and hair. and um, everybody dressing the same. You know, it was it was the, the pop era, and all the bands had thes in front of their names. <laughs> you know, <laughs> yeah, it's true. the 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 yeah. pop, yeah. the weasels. You know, it was like Damn. they're all the same, and that was uh, that's. That's the era that uh, when we started, but that's what kind of gave us our break because there wasn't very many bands doing what we were doing, you know. And so w when we did something, we really stuck out. If you were a band starting out now today, what would you do to uh, rise above the crowd? How far off the edge would you have to go in order to be recognized? Well, you got to have this. You have to have a different type of sound, you know. Yeah, a lot of these bands, what happens is that. They hear or they see what's going on and what's working for people, yep. you know, like who's the big band right now and what's working for them. And they try to change their music to fit what they think people are looking for, yep. you know, which, uh, which we would have done pop if we were doing that, you know, which what, what you have to do is you have to figure out what you want to sound like, you know, you have to get, get your sound together, you know, and stick with whatever you're doing and don't change it whatever you do. You know, always believe in what you're doing, and uh, you know, don't try to, to, to uh, you know, to fill yourself in somebody else's, you know, image. Image, yeah. Remember the Cream quote that came out? What was it? 85, March 85. A reviewer in Cream said, uh, uh, "No, I don't remember." In the month, <laughs> it said, "In 18 months, <laughs> there won't be 20 teenagers left in America who would be caught dead listening to." Motley Crue, quote unquote. And yeah, there's not 20, but it's like 20 million. <laughs> <laughs> oh well, uh, yeah, really. Four times platinum. Oh no, approaching four times platinum here. Yeah. Approaching four times platinum in the states. Mm -hmm. I think that says it all. <laughs> yes, it's been very good. Yeah, I'm very uh, happy. So you're going back to uh, Toronto on the 18th and Ottawa on the 19th. You got Montreal on the 20th. Quebec City. Quebec City. Those French women. Yeah. But never try to speak French if you don't know how. 
Ooh. You've been there. Oh, yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. So what do you figure you're going to be doing 10 years from now? Probably be doing the exact same thing. We're just going to be, I'll probably be talking to you again, <laughs> you know, next time we're here. And, uh, be raining. Be raining. <laughs> and, uh, you know, we just want to keep going. You know, um, we don't see really any any end. You know, it, we, you know I'm, nobody in the band is going, oh, God, I'm, uh, you know, okay, I'm 29 years old and, uh, Jesus, maybe I should retire by the time I'm 40. You know, no one's no one's saying that stuff. Everybody wants to just keep going. And, I mean, we want to be like the Stones, you know, and just just endless, just uh, just always there and always putting out good music. I mean, that's that's what we are. We're rockers. You know?